welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where we've got yet another debut today, this time for the intriguingly named Groctillion and their puzzle Files. Um, and I've read the rules to this and they are lovely. It's all about odds and even digits, where even digits have to float on top of odd digits if they're in the same cage. It sounds absolutely brilliant. It, I, I looked it up on Logic Masters and it has three stars out of five difficulty, 98% approval rating, and it has been recommended to us a few times, including by illustrious setters like Blobs. So this is what we're going to have a crack at um, in a moment or two. Um, now, what have I got to tell you about first? I would like to tell you about, well, we've got Line Sudoku out. Let's run through it. Line Sudoku out, our new book. If you want it before Christmas, order soon. And of course, the trick or treat Sudoku hunt over on Patreon, which is going absolute gangbusters. So do join us if you've not already and have a crack at that. Um, I can I can also a little preview. I think we've got something very exciting coming up for next month as well. But I actually I better not say too much about that. Um, now uh, a few a few announcements as well. I, I need to do in terms of birthdays and the like. Let me start off with a couple of pictures we got sent, one of which is outrageous. Right, this was from Glum Hippo. Uh, now, is this Dunkin' Donuts? I, I'm not sure. We don't really, I don't think we have Dunkin' Donuts in the UK. Um, but look, let's get cracking. I mean, that's, that's clearly got to be a, uh, a crack in the cryptic viewer in the Dunkin' Donuts um back office there coming up with uh, good ideas for their new omelette bites well done dunkin donuts and thank you for glum hippo for sending that in um now also to aunt amy on adam's behalf we we, we said happy birthday to adam last week and we mentioned that Adam was getting three cakes. So this is the last cake, the treasure chest cake. I mean, look at this. This is an absolute festival of calories <laughs> in the best possible way. I mean, that that is absolutely magnificent and quite, quite unfair to send that to me. Um, anyway, now in terms of actual birthdays today, we do have a few. So Andre, you've turned 31 today. I know you've just had knee surgery and laid up on the couch watching cracking the cryptic videos. Well, I suppose it could be worse, but Andre, I hope you're able to have some sort of celebration. Um, happy birthday, my friend. Um, next to Jason over there in Indiana, another Indiana birthday. Um, this is from Sarah, of course. Um, who tells us that you spread the word about cracking the cryptic um, wherever you go. Well, that's that's fantastic. Thank you for that, Jason, and happy birthday. Oh, and next to Retha, uh, who's turned 50 today down there in South Africa, which I often say is my favourite country. I've been to Cape Town on many occasions. I, I think it is the, it's heaven on earth, frankly. Um, you know, if there is a more beautiful city, I have not been there. Anyway, Retha sent us an ode, an ode to cracking the cryptic, believe it or not. And we do get sent a bit of poetry and the like, but this, this I thought was very good. So I'm going to read it to you if you don't mind. So an ode to cracking the cryptic. How can I tell what a channel we found? Just filling in numbers is how it will sound. What makes cracking the cryptic so insane that for an hour, will listen to a guy explain about rem bands that whisper in German and Dutch, parity, cages, and how a five can be too much to fit on an arrow that we have to sum. Do they know how cool or hot a thermo can become? Are the people around me unable to see what a wonder a miracle grid can be? They miss this, but to us who watch these puzzles, congratulations on flexing those intellect muscles. That's really good. I really like that. Thank you very much for that, Reetha, and a very happy birthday. Um, Stephen, from your daughter Lou, it's your birthday today. And Lou wanted me to tell you that you gave her the joy of puzzle solving and inspire her to keep learning, and she loves you very much. So, Stephen, happy birthday. Um, next to Brooke, who is apparently a huge fan, and I know this because your sister Harley told us. So, Brooke, happy birthday. I hope you're able to have a chocolate cake today preferably one like Adam's. Um, and then Kayla from Jean-Paul, your fiance. Um, I think I think you're getting married soon, actually. He says that he loves you, can't wait to marry you, and you're always his 10 out of 10. It sounds like you're his three in the corner to me, Kayla. Happy birthday. And then finally to Sophie. 
who has turned 10 today over there in Gloucestershire. And your parents, Jay and Laura, wrote to us, Sophie, and said you might appreciate a shout out. So m many happy returns. Um, and I hope you have an absolutely brilliant day too. And that is the birthdays done. So why don't we have a look at Groptillion's puzzle and I will read you the rules. They are as follows. Uh, normal Sudoku rules apply. So that means we've got to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, column and three by three box. Uh, digits on thermometers must increase from the bulb end. So there is, there's a plethora of short thermometers in this puzzle. So, I mean, imagine that Imagine that square was a, I was going to put a three in, but that would have, that would have caused a party to erupt. So I'm not going to imagine that's a four. This square has to be higher than four because like mercury rises, um, as the temperature rises, so must Sudoku digits rise as we move upwards from the bulb of the thermometer. So four, eight, nine would be a valid way of filling that one. Um, Along each marked diagonal, digits may not repeat. So yeah, so we've got some diagonals marked in blue. Those squares have to be a set of the digits one to nine in some order. And similarly, on the positive diagonal, so-called because it has a positive gradient. If you were to plot x, x versus y, this would have a positive gradient. This would have a negative gradient. So sometimes we refer to it as the negative diagonal. Um, yeah, so we've got to have the digits one to nine once each on the positive diagonal as well. Uh, digits in cages sum to the small number in the top left corner of the cage, if given. Right, so we only have three cages, I think. There's an 18 cage there, so those three digits sum to 18. A nine cage, those two sum to nine. <laughs> I was just staring at I think that is an 18 cage. I think that is a one poking out from underneath the, the, the line there. Yeah, it is. It is. As, as I study it, I can tell that. That's, that's a little bit hard to see. Um, so, right. So all we know, actually, how have we not got? No. OK, so none of the cages do actually migrate outside their own three by three box, which is why in the instructions we haven't got a stipulation that says digits cannot repeat within a cage because they just can't repeat within a cage anyway, because that would cause Sudoku rules to be broken. Now, here is where the rules get really strange. So then it says, each cage is either full of oil, brackets even digits, full of water, brackets odd digits, or a mix of both. In all cases, each row within a cage is of just one type, brackets oil or water. Oil floats on water. There is a knowledge bomb from cracking the from Groctillion. Um, so even digits will always be in rows above odd digits in mixed cages. Yeah, OK, so I sort of do understand what that's saying. So that's saying, let's look at this cage. If we worked out that that square was even, now we're going to have to have even and odd colouring today. So I think what I meant to use is blue for even and orange for odd because orange and odd begin with the same letter and orange and blue are our best colorblind distinct um, options from within our palette so say we knew that was even then I think we know that that one's even um, oh I've just had an update from Mark about his countdown escapades I cannot say anything I'm sworn to secrecy um, now um, so Anyway, get your head back in the game, Simon. Yeah, so if this was even, we're, we're told that everything of the same level in the same row within a cage has to be the same, either has to be all even or all odd. So if this was even, evens, evens float on or odd, so those could both be odd or they could both be even. Um, what we couldn't have is odd on top of even. That's what we can't have, isn't it? So we can't have water float, floating on top of oil. So if we if we did that, that's broken, isn't it? Let me just double check the rules. Um, yeah, evens will always be in rows above odds. So this is not allowed. Um, and that's all the rules. So it's a very unusual one today. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. But now I get to play. Let's get cracking. Now, here is a knowledge bomb. There are five odd digits 
and four even digits in any row or column or box of a Sudoku. Yeah. <laughs> that's a knowledge bomb that's not worth very much bombing, is it? That is not a very um that's not a very good good bit of information I've just shared with you there. Uh so what really are we being told here? We're being told that even digits flo always float on odd digits. So if you ever put an even digit at the bottom of a K, like if that was an even digit, the whole thing becomes even, doesn't it? Because you can't have, we couldn't have an odd digit above an even digit. So when you put even digits at the bottom of cages, that forces the whole cage. And similarly, if you put odd at the top of cages, that forces the whole cage as well. So we're going to have to probably think about those things. So, so that can't be even. <laughs> Is that true? I think that's true, because if that was even, that whole cage would have to be even, and there would be five evens in box six, and that's not going to work. So that one is odd. There we go. We've, we've got a, we haven't got a digit by any manner nor means, but we have got a shade done. But that tells us nothing about it. It really doesn't tell us very much, because if that was even, that would work, because we could shade that whole of the rest of the cage even. The rest of this would then be odd, and that wouldn't break any rules. Uh, hang on, I'm not getting this at the moment. There's, some, there's something going on, I'm sure. Just have to figure out what it is. Um, I think it's going to be to do with these stripe, these stripy cages, because I can see, for example, I mean, actually. No, actually, that's not true. What I was about. To... Well, you certainly couldn't put two even digits at the bottom of, of any of these. No, any of these cages, even this one, which has a domino cage, because if I make both of those even, that's five evens instantly. And that's too many. So a maximum of one of those squares is even. And a maximum of one of these squares is even. So a minimum of two of... Oh! So this is all even. This seems to be the corollary of that. So if, if this was all odd, let's try and prove it the other way round. If this was all odd, yeah, I can instantly see that's broken. Because I've now got to put four evens in this row, which means, um, what, at, at, well, one of these boxes at least has to have two evens, in a base position, which is going to flood uh, flood the chute that that's in with even digits and cause either six or five, I suppose, would be the minimum, five even digits in one of these boxes, or even possibly nine even digits, which is a concept so ludicrous, even the scientist in The Simpsons would object to it. So this is even. Now, so these are all odd now, aren't they? <laughs> Is this right? <laughs> because now, if you put an even in either of those, they're both even, and that would cause five evens, and that would cause six evens. So I think all of those are odd. That's even, and at least we've, we've made a tiny start here. Right, what about this column now? That one can't be even, because that would all become even, so that's odd. Ah, Bobbins McBobbins face. That... That's very annoying, actually. That doesn't seem to propagate. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I'm wondering, actually. I'm wondering if that can be... No, that's fine, isn't it? What I can't do in this row is to put two odds at the top of cages. Because if I did that, I think the implication of that is those would flood with odd digits. And that would cause six odds in a box. 
but I could allocate the odds, couldn't I, like that? Or indeed put one in this bulb, and that would be all right. Okay, so that's not how to do it. Um, oh, I see. Right, hang on. Haven't I got the same pattern with this one that I had with that one? If that's all odd, yeah, this is worse even. This is even worse. If this one's all odd, then I've got to put four evens at the base of these six cells. And even if whichever way I allocate them, I will get at least six evens in a box. So it's, I don't even have the option of five, which I had there. Um, so this one has to be blue, which means this one is orange. Oh, look, and this box is this box is naughtier than this one because this one has flexibility. We don't know any anything about the parity in these cells because then they're, they're uncaged. Right. Ah, OK, but I can extend column four's logic one more cell, I think. If that was now even, that would cause this to be even and I'd have five evens in the column. So that one's odd. So I've now got, f well, I've got four odds, three evens. So these are one of each. Ah, no, no. Right. What about this one, though? That one's got to be odd as well as well if that's even I've got five evens again so that's odd I was slowly but surely um, having a well getting somewhere with this I think oh oh I just had a funny buzzing noise in my ear that must have been the matrix trying to contact me um, okay what does that mean it wasn't my phone was it it just felt like it came from that direction um, what about this column? That can't be even. I'd have five evens in the column, so that's odd. I've got a lot of odds in box five now. If, if that's odd, I'd have to odd the middle digit as well, and that would be six odds in the column, so that's even. I've now okay, so I've now I've now reached the same position in column five that I've reached in column four. I've got an ambiguity between these two digits. Although, look at the oh, hang on, I've got four odds in row six. Oh, this is big. This is big because I can only have one more odd, and obviously, if either of these are odd, that's going to work. And if either of these are odd, I'd have to have two odds. So those are all even. This is odd. And this thermometer is entirely, in fact, both of these thermometers are entirely odd. And the, oh, look, 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 no, hang on. <laughs> Another thing is that these are evens at the base of cages. So these cages get entirely filled. Oh, this is gorgeous, actually. Loads of things are popping off here because that's four evens in box four. So all of those have to be odd. Um, and this now if 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 either of these is even they're both even and that would cause five evens in the row so that's both odd um so this is like a domino now this is one of these has to be even one of these has to be odd in the row um the, okay, neither of these can be even, otherwise they'd both be even, that would be five even. So the, so we've actually done all the shading. Oh, we've got double even on a thermometer here. Oh, and an even odd on a thermometer there. So the sort of one cell, two cell thermometers that ring, that sort of provide some sort of join around the Fistemafel ring, are a whole variety of parities. Now... How do we take this further? I can see this can't be... No, that can't... I got that the wrong way around. I was thinking, if I put even there, it's going to flood the box with evens. That's not right. If that's even, it floods the box with even. So that can't be even. That's odd. Ah... Uh... I don't know now. Hang on. I'm stuck again. 
Okay, I've got... Yeah, I there is. I'm sure there's some stuff we can do in these columns. I don't think it's going to be very profound, but I think we can pick off some digits. For example, neither of these can be even because that would cause flooding and make five even. So they're both odd. And the same must be true at the bottom. They're both odd. That's not really... I've got to maybe keep an eye on the diagonals as well. I've not even thought of the diagonals yet, but we do need to make sure we've got the right number of odds and evens on the diagonals. Yeah, so far I don't think we've got enough information to do much with that, I'm afraid. What about... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> okay, let's try this column then. If that was odd, I'd have six odds in the column. So that is definitely even. Ah. Ah, okay, so we can do something here using the nine cage. Because the nine cage adds up to an odd number, <laughs> which means it contains an odd and an even digit. Now that means there is an um, there's definitely an orange and a blue down here in this domino. So let's how would we make the 18 work? These two have to be the same parity in order to get to 18. We've got an even number here, so we're left with these two adding up to an even number. Now they're either therefore two evens or they're two odds. But if they were two odds, given there's an odd down here, there'd be six odds in the column. So they are two evens. And now I've done this row uh, because all of that has to be odd. Uh, oh, hang on. No, that's okay, isn't it? Because I can put evens above odds. <laughs> I'm getting confused. That's all right. So I've got, I've got some evens above odds. Um... Okay. Ah, now neither of these can be even, or I'd have to flood. The, I'd flood upwards, and that would create five evens in this box. So both of those are odd, which means this is one of each. Actually, I'm going to have a color for that. Let's have let's have green. So that that means one of each parity in a domino. Um, okay. That might be useful. Let's see. Oh, look, sorry. Five. I've got five odds in this row. So both of those are e oh, they're evens at the top of columns. Oh, no, that's still useful. Um, I mean, evens at the top of columns aren't that useful. But look, that has completed evens in, in column four. So that's odd. But that doesn't tell us anything. That could be a one. Um, we know that's not a nine, I suppose. That's one thing we can say for it. It could be could be a seven, couldn't it? Seven, eight, nine. So that has very little constraint upon it. Um, this is one of each. Let's try and remember that. Okay, and therefore, let's look at this column. I've got three odds. So if I made that odd, that would be six odds. So that's even. Yeah, it's nearly, it's nearly getting interesting, I think. Oh my goodness, hang on. This is, that's three even numbers that add up to 18. I know that all four even numbers in Sudoku add up to 20. So I know what, oh, sorry, I know what that is. That's four, six, eight. So I now know, oh, this is lovely. I now know there's a two in my nine cage because there must be an even digit in it. And therefore there is a seven in my nine cage. So this is two, seven. Seven is horizontal inbox uh, four now by Sudoku. So seven is in one of those three squares. Oh, that was quite exciting for a moment. Well, I mean, where, well, here's a question. Where's nine in this column? Can't go in the bulb of a thermo. So nine's in one of two, whoops, <laughs> I managed to put eight in, but then there's a nine in one of those two positions. Okay, so yeah, okay, sorry. So the, another obvious point, oh, 
this is so obvious I can't believe I didn't make it before but look how could you possibly put even at the bottom of a nine cage it will then have even above it and will add up to an even number so we actually know the parity of these and we're going to get a digit in the puzzle that's got to be a two that's got to be a seven I'm so sorry I didn't see that before but hopefully you can forgive me um there's a two up there somewhere Oh, there's not, but the two isn't there. That is the third cell along a thermometer. So the two is, oh, well, that's actually that's nearly interesting. But unfortunately, this might be able to be a two. That can't be a two, can it? Because that's an even digit beneath it, and one is not even. But that can be a two, I think. Well, no, it definitely can be. Um, bobbins. All right. OK, so we nearly did something useful, but then we I, I didn't really. OK, let's do this. This column has the same profile as this one. There are three odd digits, so that can't be odd. So that is even and it's probably two. Therefore, um, two evens in this row. If that was odd, that would be five odds in the column. And this would be two evens. Don't know if that's possible or not. Um, is this another of these green dominoes? It's what well, it clearly is. It's one of each, isn't it? That's one of each. That's going to make four evens for row five. Ah, OK, this is now odd by dint of the fact that we've finished this column's uh, parity. So I've got four odds now in row seven. Is that useful as a deduction? Do I know... I know I've got two odds on this tomato. That doesn't prevent them having an even between them. Uh, okay, I'm getting stuck. Bother. What about... I know these are of opposite parity. We might have to sort of start thinking about that at some point soon. I have... Oh, hang on. I've got another 18 here, haven't I? I haven't thought about this. And I've got an even at the top of it. So these two have the same parity. So they're either two odds, which could work, or they're two evens, which also could work. If these were two odds, these would be two evens. If these are two evens, these are all odds. And these are all evens. I keep thinking that might break for some reason, but it, I don't think it does, actually. Hmm, that is peculiar, isn't it? What about... Two in this box has to be in one of two places. I'm suddenly seeing. So two in this box is in one of three places. It can be here on the thermometer, unfortunately. If that's a two, that is a one. Which, I mean, obviously that's doing something. Um... Okay, so I'm stuck again, aren't I? One of these, okay, let's think about this. One of these is even. So that's going to, oh yeah, okay, this is good. This is good. One of these is even. So that means it's going to cause flooding within its chute. And that's going to complete the evens for this box. So these are both odd. So and that, oh, this is great. So these are both even. Is it great or not? It might not be great, actually. Um, no, it might not be. Okay, so one of one of this is a domino of even. 
and whichever one that is it completes its evens for its column so so there's sort of a, an x wing of evens because if that's double even that's double even and if that's double even that's double even so what that means is one of these one of these two cells is definitely even and that completes the even coterie um, for row one we're going to have one here one in this domino one in this domino and one here um, which means these are both odd and if they're both odd that is now even which that's good but it's not good enough I don't think uh, <laughs> I don't think it is anyway is it yeah so we've got we've got strange things afoot now this is one of each parity but it I better not label it green I've already got green so that's one of each parity that can be double green that's definitely true and okay what else do we now know if anything probably not very much oh hang on that's odd that can't be two I do know something that's two so that's not two. Oh, nearly nearly okay where is two on the positive diagonal because it can't be there and it's so it's not in those and it's not in these so it's in one of these which is almost giving me another digit it depends whether that's a two what about two on the negative diagonal um ah no oh this is lovely this is so clever actually it's really clever look um so i was looking at two on this negative diagonal but i think a better question is not about two it's about the other even digits because that's even but it's not two so that's got to be four six or eight and this is even and it's four six or eight because it isn't two so there is a four six eight triple on this diagonal and that means that square which sees now a four six eight triple and a two is odd and if that's odd it must have odd beneath it and that means that these two are both even and if those two are both even these two are both odd and that means <laughs> that these two are both even and that means well that means that's not a two because that's in an odd, odd square now so that's a two so that's a two so this is not a two so there is, oh this is so beautiful this is grok tillian take a bow look what this is doing so we worked out on the on the positive diagonal there was a two uh, in one of those two squares but this two has now placed it in a green cell which means that that green becomes blue and that square therefore becomes orange and that square can't be two so that's two and that means it's not green it's blue that's become orange not two uh, presumably now well we have to be very careful this can't now be blue or we'd have five blue so that's blue at the top that's got to be orange to complete the column we've now got five oranges in that row so this is double blue that's right that's that's right that's giving me the correct count in this column and in this box and hopefully on the diagonals which I haven't, che I haven't checked really yeah okay so look we've got four six and eight on this diagonal some of which are on a thermo so that can't be eight and that can't be four by dint of that logic and this digit is odd and beneath a maximum of six so this can't be seven or nine that's one three or five this is a four six or eight can we do more with twos yeah look look i can get a two there i can get a two there a 
I feel like I've done a lot of twos. Uh, have, I have. I've done all the twos. Okay, well that's good. That can't, That's a four or a six. Because this doesn't seem to be able to be nine. If I made this eight, that would need to be nine. So there is an eight in one of these two squares in box number four, which means this square is four or six. So I suspect this is now going to become one of these puzzles where we, we sort of have two puzzles going on. We have an odd puzzle and an even puzzle. Yeah, I mean, what about this thermo? It's entirely odd. So that's got to be one, three or five. It can't be seven because we can't put eight here. So this is three, five or seven. And this is five, seven or nine. Which... Uh, might matter don't know yeah there's another thermo that's emerging here look so these squares which are from four six and eight you can't put the eight there you can't put the four there yeah and now in this row i've got a four six pair on the flanks so that's an eight this is now a four or a six let's put that in uh, this is a four six pair. That's a four six pair. The eight. There's definitely an eight in this domino. Uh, that's. I don't think that's doing as much as I was. Oh no no no. There's a six eight pair in this column now from somewhere. So that's got to be a four. That's got to be a six. That's got to be a four. That's got to be a six. These are now a four eight pair. Um, these are now a six eight pair. Let's put that in. Correct some pencil marking. And let's hope this has done something. Uh, it's got rid of six from that square. So if this was four, that would have to be three, one, very specifically. Um, six, eight. So there's definitely a four in this domino. Oh dear, I think we might be about to run run into a brick wall here. Ah, they've got, we've got another length 3 thermo, so that's going to have exactly the same properties as this length 3 thermo, or in terms of its entirely oddness. So that's 135, that's 3. Ah, that's, this is going to be better though, because 7 isn't available for this one. So that can't be 5 anymore. Um, and this square is 5 or 9 only. So nine in this box is down at the bottom, which means nine over here can't go midway up a thermo. Nine is in the is vertical. Ah, it's not quite good enough. Doesn't. What about seven then? Can that be seven? Yes, I think so. Seven is in one of three places in box nine. Um. Yeah, and there might be some jiggery pokery going on in box eight. I'm seeing a lot of thermo cells, so I am going to look at that in a moment. Let me just think about this one for a bit longer. Can we do? I mean, that digit is a one or a three, and it's clearly got to go in this domino. So these squares are from one, three, and seven. Five is now vertical in column three. Yeah, I don't think that's doing enough. Uh, where, where is it then? <laughs> what is it I'm meant to be spotting here? Oh, I'll take I'll take an easy win. One, three, five, triple on that diagonal. So that's got to be nine, right? So it's probably the diagonals I've been neglecting. So there's now a no ah, there's a nine in this domino. And you can't put 9 partially up along a thermometer. So the 9 goes here. So the 9 is in one of those two squares. Which means the 9 is in one of these two squares. Now look, the 9s are aligning in sort of boxes 4 and 6. And we have to put a 9 into this row. So the 9 is going to be in one of those squares. Not there because of the diagonal. What about here? Yeah, that's lovely actually. Yes, so what we could have done probably some time ago is to look at this diagonal and ask where 9 goes on it. It's an odd digit, so it's going in orange, 
but all the cells apart from that one are partially along a thermometer so that is nine that's that's probably been available for ages i apologize if you've been shouting at me about that one this not being able to be nine knocks seven out of this one which knocks five out of this one this is really clever i like this very much now nine has to be in this domino in the box which means that's not nine that is nine and can we oh no we can't quite i thought we might be able to do some something clever this square is one three or five I mean, in terms of the diagonal now, we definitely know there's a 1 in one of these two squares, and we know there's a 7 in one of these two squares. Either of those things would be useful to, to resolve. Uh, can I see a way of doing that? Not, not immediately, if I'm honest. Bobbins. Uh, oh. That square has got to be lower than 4, so, and it's odd. So that's 1, 3, oh, I see, and I've got a 1, 3, 7 triple. So this is a 5, 9 pair in row 4. I don't know if that's going to do anything or not. I suspect, oh, here's a small point. Where does 9 go in box 8? Can't go midway along a thermo, so it's at the tip of either this thermo or this thermo, which knocks it out of this square, which places it in that square. Does that do more? Probably, but I can't see how. No! Oh dear. Uh, these are from 1, 3, and 5, just by Sudoku. So this square, oh well, no. Some fly now going crazy. It's been a very eventful uh, off camera. Um, well, with my with me hearing something in that ear and now a fly buzzing round, there's all sorts of things going on. Um, there's definitely a seven here. It might. It's probably this thermometer. Is it? Could it be this thermometer? Don't know. I, I think only only once once I got rid of a. If I could get rid of 8 from here, this thermo would be under a bit more pressure. I think until I've managed to do that, it feels... Oh, no, this was the thermo I wanted to look at a while ago. Because this now can't be 2. This is at least 4. It can't be 8, can it? Because there aren't two higher digits than 8. So that's at least 4. So this is at least 5. So this is 5 or 7. And this is 7 or 9 only. Right, now, so where does 1 go in this, this this congregation? It's got to be in one of these two squares, hasn't it? Can't be at the tip of a thermo. We can't put 0 here. So 1 is in one of those squares. We know it's not there because we've got this 1, 3, 5 thing going on on this diagonal. Is that good enough to learn something new? Ah! Don't think so bother <laughs> oh dear okay so that doesn't work um that digit has to go there in this box so that's a one or a three. Oh, hang on i don't know what happened there i want to put one or three into this square these two being the same can we do something with that i don't know um what else could we do? I'm not sure whether I'm meant to look at... I might be. It might be intended that I go back and think about even digits. If that's 4, can that really be 3, 1? That would be 7, that would be 9. It would resolve everything if this was 4. So why can't that be 8? That would be a good thing to know. I don't know. Um... I know these are 4, 6 and 8. It's not to do with the t totals, is it? No, because 18 is forced here once these are all even. We've, done, we've used the 9 cage. Uh, this is even. 
but higher than 2, so that's fine. That's not under any pressure. All right, I'm going to fully pencil mark the evens. Let's just do that. See if it reveals anything. I don't think it's going to. Uh, no. Well, these the oh well a tiny point. The, the eight in this column has to be vertical there, doesn't it? Which does take eight out of this square. Which moves eight over into these squares, but the, I don't think these are under pressure. And the, oh, unless it's the diagonal. Yeah, maybe that. Maybe I've got to do these diagonals a bit more diligently. Let's think about that. Yeah, that square can't be a 7, can it? Because this would have to be a 9. And therefore, where does 7 go in the top row? It's got to go here. So this is 1, 3, or 5. And this is 3, 5, or 7 in theory. with both options being available. Um, okay, all right, so we've got to do a bit more, a bit more work. These are now ones, threes and fives in this column. I just don't think it's quite doing enough. This square is three, five or seven. Okay, yeah, no, it's well, it is now. Where does one go in this row? It's got to go there. It's the only place it can go. So that's not one. This being three or five does put pressure on this, which now has to be five, seven, or nine. And it can't be nine. So this is five or seven. Has that done it? I don't know. I don't think it has. Three, five, seven. No, I don't think it's. I don't think it's quite done enough. Um, let's think. I don't know. It went. It's going to be picking off these digits using these tiny little thermometers, <laughs> and I'm just not sure what the efficient way of doing it is. Um, could we knock? nine out let's click double click nines just check we've got five nines in the grid and two x wings left so it's probably not nines sevens we know two things about sevens oh well that's useful where does seven go on this diagonal it's got to go here sorry that's been available for ages um that's great so that's five that's three that's one so, and we know that digit goes up here with a 7. So this is now one 7 pair, which makes this a 3. That's going to do it, I think. That's not 3 in the corner. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and if this is one 7, what else do we get from that? This digit is 3 or 5, and it can't be 5. So it's got to be 3. This digit is 5 or 9. In this row we haven't put 1, so let's put the 1 in. This is now a 3-5 pair in the middle row. This is now a 9. This is now a 5. This can't be 9, so that's now a 9. This is a 1-7 pair. Ah! 1-7 pair, please. Thank you. Um, this is not 5 anymore. That's not, that's not the way we want that thermometer to work, is it? This is one, three, or seven. Let's check these die. I think it, I think I, I've I haven't done enough good Sudoku work with some of these diagonals. That's not one. So this is a three five pair looking at that square. So that's a seven. That's not a seven. So that's the seven in the other box. That's that's not seven anymore. One three now looks at that. So seven and one go in. That's got to be the one in this box. We get a three five pair, which allows us to plonk the seven. That's a five. This is a one or a three. This is one three five triple, in fact. So that's got to be seven. 
that's got to be one. Oh, that's probably been available. I haven't, <laughs> I've just noticed that there's a six on this thermometer. That's unforgivably bad. Um, okay, now, this square is higher than three, but not seven, so it's five or nine. Is that really, it's really both of that, are really both of those things possible? I'm sure they're not for some reason, I can't see. Um, what about then? Yeah, if you look at this column and ask where three goes, it's in one of these two squares, so it can't be there. That's got to be a one. So that's not a one in the corner. Can that be three still, perhaps, with this? Oh, what about this diagonal? No, I've got a one on it. Oh, goodness me. Three, one. One. Five goes on that one. Three goes on that one. Three and five go at the bottom. That doesn't resolve this. It could still be four, look. Um, and... That three sees that five on the other diagonal. So that fixes that, that fixes that. This is a five nine pair. Let's put it in and see if it's resolved. That's a three by Sudoku. That's a five by Sudoku. Um, how, are the, how are these odd digits being resolved now? Oh, it, I, su I suppose it could be done by the even digits. Because if that's a six, that will cause that to be seven, nine, and that would resolve this. So I mustn't neglect even digits. Do we know it? Yeah, we do. Look, that being a seven forces this to be an eight. So that's a four. So that's a four and that's an eight. Now, has that done stuff? I don't know. Eight's coming out of all sorts of places. Uh, eight's coming out of here. Eight's got to be there in column five. This four is seeing that square, so that's six, that's four, that's six, that's four. That it's that's how to do it. That's how the odd digits get done, is with the six here. That's lovely. So this is seven, this is nine, this is now five. That's nine, that's five. Um this four sees that six, that's, oh, that's six, that's got to be an eight, that's got to be a four, that's got to be an eight, that's got to be a six. These two squares are now, well, that's the eight of them, that's the four of them. That's a four and that's a six, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. What a lovely puzzle. Isn't that clever? Um, just, yeah, and it is like, it's like several puzzles in one. You have to, we did that puzzle the other day, the analytical ninja puzzle, where it was 10 puzzles in one. You sort of had to do each box as a separate puzzle. That was, I mean, that was wonderful. But here, there was sort of this idea around, you know, the odd and even shading. And then that just allowed you to get a bite on, well, then you had to sort of, I think it was the two. It was that two somehow. Or maybe it was a two up there. I can't quite remember. But there was a two that we got, which which completed the shading. And then after that, it was sort of it was being diligent about thermos, which I think I was appalling at, especially using the diagonals. Um, but never mind. I'm going to bl I'm going to blame the fly. <laughs> Files. Groctillion. What a debut that was. Brilliant puzzle. Loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on with it. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.